This is Sailing Ruby Rose. Last week we flew from London all the way to Bangkok. It was something we wanted to do to see the night markets, to experience the food and the culture in such a vibrant Asian city. However, we had to leave and we had to leave to go sailing. So after a short flight, we left Bangkok and headed to Phuket to pick up our catamaran. Now for us, this is the first time we had skipped a catamaran on our own and it was with some trepidation that we walked down the pontoons to start sailing. This is our adventure. this boat out of this marina today. I'm not gonna lie, feeling mildly apprehensive. Um, not least because I never maneuver the boat in and out of anywhere. But somehow it has happened that I'm the only one, well, out of Nick and I, I'm the only one who's actually done anything in a catamaran before in terms of helming and steering and maneuvering. So um, yeah, it's up to me. I've heard that it's relatively straightforward. We're gonna have a dinghy come and help us out. So uh, they'll at least prevent me from going into any other boats or into any other pontoons or anywhere that I shouldn't do. And then we'll be out of here and then we can get to our first anchorage of the night. There's a little bit of a breeze. I'm hoping that we get the sails up and we'll be able to get a little bit of drive from the sails. So that'll be really awesome. sailing for a week, I can't even tell you. As the sun was setting and we were in unfamiliar waters, we made the bold decision to sail a heady six miles away from the marina. The nearest charted island for the water that we were going to have at this state of tide was a small island called Panak. And so with the last of the daylight, we dropped the hook, sat back on the trampolines and enjoyed some of the finest sights we have ever seen while sailing. And for those of you that know sailing, you know that some traditions are hardwired. And one of those traditions for us is the sundowner. Whether we're mid-Atlantic, whether we're anchored off Thailand, or whether we're just in local waters, sitting and having a beer, catching up with the day's events and watching the sun go down is something that we value above almost everything in our sailing. And this was a particularly stunning view from the local fishermen in their long-tailed boats to the changing colors of the skies, an absolutely beautiful, beautiful setting for what was gonna be our first night at anchor in Thailand. And with the sun set, but the air temperature at a balmy 29 degrees, we turned to some old school passage planning. The charter company had left us a pilot book of the area and with a good set of charts, a Portland plotter, a set of dividers, we were able to sit and work out our passage for the day ahead. Now, for those of you who think that maybe their skill set has fallen out of practice because of the advent of plotters, I heartily recommend going back to the drawing board. 
It is an absolute joy to sit and do some old school planning, especially where you have big tidal ranges and changes in tide height with time. This is all good for your knowledge base. With the whole of Sunday stretching ahead of us, we all woke to find an absolutely windless day. There was going to be no sailing done today. However, our destination for the evening was a place called Koh Hong, a popular tourist trap, but we've been told that once the tourists left at sunset, it was absolutely spectacular. So, as soon as we'd had breakfast, we hauled anchor and Teresa took us away and off to the next island. Yeah. With a lot of the navigation in these waters being eyeball navigation, i.e. you can see exactly where you need to go, this was a pretty easy sail. The chart plotter, well, it wasn't showing us exactly where we needed to go, but we had depth and we had a log reading. And so with Teresa at the helm, I took to, well, let's just say uh, observing the beauty of these islands. Okay, so we've arrived in Koh Hong and you can see that there are like billions of day trippers just behind me. So we're trying to just get around the corner from them. This has got to be, surely, one of the most spectacular anchorages that we've ever been in. I can't think of a more impressive anchorage than this. And with the tourist boats leaving for the evening, we got down to passage planning and then dinner. Okay, so there's just one location. All right, so the tidal station. Where did I put that mark on the map? So two meters above datum, rising to 2.5 above datum. Yeah. So 2.5 above datum. 2.2. So the tide's gonna go up 30 centimeters and down from here by 30 centimeters. There's a foot either way. Oh, well, that's gonna go up a foot and down a foot. So that's for our anchor calculations, and seeing as we've got to do this for tomorrow, it's actually going to go up to 2.7 meters at two o'clock in the morning. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's going to go up uh, 70 centimeters. So it's going to go up two foot, 70 centimeters um, between now and the highest point during our tenure at the anchor ship. At, at the, the anchor ship. Anchor, <laughs> anchor ship. <laughs> our tenure at the anchor ship. <laughs> Until I actually go to a pub called the Anchor and a pub called the Ship on a regular basis. <laughs> and for those who don't know, that's the, the Ship Inn in uh, Konya and the Anchor Inn in Thabisham. Uh Yes, yeah, so our tidal maths, actually, it's the third. But the tide last night, actually, um, was higher still. It was the high. The high was 2 a.m. at 2.9 metres above datum. Okay. Uh, and we've got 2.7, 2.7 like above datum here. So, I can't remember whether he's about 50 meters or 60 meters out. No, he said 50. He said that's what they've got. They've got 50 meters of chain and just to put it all out. No, I thought he said 50 then he said 60. Anyway, 50 and we've got in what, 10 meters of water? Yeah. 10. Let's give it a little bit. So we've got four times scope. Which for chain is enough. I always like five times scope for chain, but nonetheless, four we, times. We only have 15 meters, so. Yeah, you get that, yes. Exactly. You Did you put all the chain out then? I always leave a little bit, because yesterday I unreeled it so far, I got to the bitter end, and uh, yeah, I don't like that, because literally that means your entire boat is hanging on a five mil line, which is designed to be cut, so I always leave enough. Yeah, so it's around the. Um... 
Well, because the worst case scenario is, if you think about this, I always think about the apocalyptic scenario. The bridle comes off and the gypsy slips. Yeah. In the wind. Yeah. Which uh, is when it would. Yes. And then literally you're unspooling chain. Yeah. To the bitter end. Um, and then you, you know, lose all your chain. Yeah, because a five mile line will just go. Yeah. Luckily we've got a spare anchor. But I don't fancy going back to the charter boats and saying we lost the anchor. <laughs> And 50 metres of 10 more galvanised chain. Okie dokie, so that's where we are with that. And from here on in, it's just quite a nice tide table this. Over the course of our week. Strange, which is a tide. We must be going into a spring. We picked the boat up on the 2nd and we're taking it back on the 9th. Mm. The biggest tide is on the 9th. So we might, we're at a neap going into a spring. Okay. Yeah, she said that we were, we were at neaps. Oh, so neap going into spring. Alrighty. With our tidal calculations complete, there was nothing left to do but sit back and enjoy the scenery while sunbathing in this amazing anchorage. The wind was due to pick up in the middle of the night, so we did put out as much chain as we could. However, as we settled down to enjoy the silence in this anchorage, we heard the ever increasing noise of a marinized diesel engine and a long-tailed boat. Since we set off sailing, we've always had the policy of talking to local fishermen. So a quick wave, a quick hello, and the exchange of about $10, well, and that was dinner sorted for a couple of evenings. Thank you, my friend. Have a good day. Come on, come on. Well, there you go. Yeah, well, don't we got a barbie? Yeah. We can barbecue them, we can put them into a massive prawn curry. Oh, we don't have any rice. <laughs> prawn curry and noodles? I still think I'll eat that rice, it's only weevils. The sailors. What happens is when you put the, when you put the rice in the water, the weevils float out. Do they? So with our friendly fisherman on his way home and Teresa telling me in no certain terms that we were not eating rice with weevils for dinner, we settled down to our sundowner and a good chat before dinner. Day two. Is it day two or day one? No, it's day two. Day we two. did out the boat yesterday, this is day two. Reflections? Metaphoric, obviously not literal. Well... I, look, it, this is, it has got to be some of the most stunning scenery that we've ever anchored in front of, surely. I mean, it is just unlike anywhere else that we've yeah. been before. Yeah, I know we say that we do say this a lot, but this is amazing. I know, it's absolutely spectacular. I mean, this as an anchorage, I can't think of anything that's even more visually spectacular. Uh... I actually agree. I think uh, even, you know, I'm not talking about best anchorages and things no. like that. Yeah, as visually spectacular anchoring goes, yes, this is number one. Yeah. I thought, actually, I think before this, um, when we were in Tahiti Marea. and Morea, yeah. that was visually stunning. This is more visually stunning. Yeah, this is lovely. So, yes, this is the most visually stunning place we have ever sailed. Mm. Yeah, but it's interesting because, you know, it's, um, it's very touristy. You know, the, the, the day boats from Phuket have been here all day. We've only just managed to get some some calm, um, which but, is not like, you know, normally we don't kind of do with that so much. We're very much in the, on the cruising circuit. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I get that. I, we have no more right to be here than them. Oh, so, no, of course we don't. No, that's not what I was about to say. It's just a different vibe. Yeah, well, yeah, I think. I think it's difficult to assess the vibe when we're literally just us on the boat. Yeah. I think it'll be different, you know, if we get off the boat tomorrow. Yeah. And get to go and have a beer on the beach. Yeah. And I think that's what I want to do tomorrow night. I want to get off the boat and have a beer on the beach. So wherever we anchor tomorrow night, we're gonna to have to dinghy ashore. Yes. Well, that's that's gonna be our our plan. That's our game plan for next. Yeah. For tomorrow. Yeah. Because there's only so many fishermen selling prawns <laughs> that we're gonna be lucky enough to find. Yeah. But it's pretty relaxing. Very relaxing. I, I don't feel like, I mean, obviously, the fact that my laptop is not currently working like forces me to be a little bit lazy, but I've had a lazier afternoon than I've had in a long time. We don't have 
in any internet, we've got a very weak signal, and it's just kind of forcing us to, you know, I even had a nap this afternoon, which I ne never do. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't want to nap. I'm still not into naps. Uh, but yeah, I had a little swim and we went for a little dinghy ride and we've just been like kicking back and enjoying the scenery and plenty to look at lots of boats going past with people. I'm not boring. No, no, just I'm relaxed. Yeah. It is very relaxing. Uh, look, this cat's around living monarchy is relaxing. You know, a non moving platform. I know. All on one level. Yeah. All right. Yes, please. The bay's actually been quite choppy today because of the current being through between the islands and um, still it's just been like there's been a little bit of a, a rock that nothing, even, I mean, yeah, we both slept through it. Well, the weight from all those uh, long tail boats and ferries today would have sent our little monohull like, yeah. we would have knocked plates off. Yeah. Anyway. Cheers. Cheers. A relaxing evening. Continue with our relaxing, relaxing day. Mm -hmm. and barbecue some prawns and exactly. Have some and with the sun rapidly setting, we found ourselves lighting the barbecue. We had a few fresh limes, a bag full of prawns that we purchased from a local fisherman, some cold beer, and a packet of noodles. And as we sat watching the sunset, throwing the shells from the prawns into the water. And drinking our cold beer, we reflected that this probably was one of the best meals we'd ever had in a location and with a view that was better than we've ever had before and actually is the reason why we love sailing and why we continue to sail. So join us next week as we continue to sail these amazing Thai islands. Finally we get some wind and get some sailing done. We also take the dinghy ashore and duck in to avoid the mother of all thunderstorms. So see you next week.